Hello booktube, today I'm reviewing this uh, weighty and unfortunately not in very good condition book, uh, The Campaigns of Napoleon. And there's quite a lot to say about this book. It uh, took me a while to read, as you can probably tell. Uh, although I'm used to on books like this. And this will be the last non-fiction book I'm going to be reviewing in a while, unfortunately. Well, actually maybe not too long, but the thing is I have a lot of other books I'm going to get through. So you won't be seeing many non-fiction books in the near future. So I want to make this a uh, particularly comprehensive review. Stanny. So this book is generally regarded as the best, or at least one of the best, books ever written on the Napoleonic Wars. It is an old one, though. I believe it was published in 1968 by the uh, American historian David Chandler, or was it British? British or American historian David Chandler. And now, um, he overviews, it's um, actually a little bit inaccurate to say it's about the Napoleonic Wars, because technically speaking, it's called the Campaigns of Napoleon, and it's focused on Napoleon, which means that it goes, to, it deals with his uh, military campaigns, well, his beginnings at the uh, the Siege of Toulon, then the Italian campaign, then the Egyptian campaign, then the War of the Second Coalition. So technically speaking, it's not quite Napoleonic Wars. And even when it is Napoleonic Wars, it's only concerned with the parts that involve Napoleon. So for example, uh, when it deals with the Peninsula War, it's only briefly, because he was only there in the year 1808, and he didn't like come back after that. So it's technically speaking not really about the Napoleonic Wars, but it is largely about the Napoleonic Wars. But this book... Is should not definitely not be mistaken. I already said it should be mistaken quite for a book about the Napoleonic Wars. It also should definitely not be mistaken for biography of Napoleon. There is there's some biographical information. He actually does go into like a uh, bit of Napoleon's life, so it actually works pretty well as biography, but not the best. Like it's not the other biography of Napoleon I read before because his discussion of Napoleon's life is only superficial. The main focus is the battles and his method of waging battles. So the book is organized, it starts talking first about his uh, earlier exploits in, um, <clears throat> I believe it starts out with the Siege of Toulon, then the Italian campaigns, then describing how warfare worked in that era, then going to the Egyptian campaign, then going to, I don't know if it, the Battle of Marengo first, or, may, or maybe before that is, ex is a description of how, Nap how Napoleon's battles worked, and then the rest, the rest of the Napoleonic Wars. So his the idea about Napoleon is that he actually wasn't, according to him, someone who was very much a military theorist. Like he didn't make new, many new ideas apart from the Grand Battery and the Divisional Square and a few tactical innovations like that. His, ma his main concern was applying the ideas made by other people. So for example, the core system, which he, uh, you could say he perfected it, but that had existed before Napoleon and the idea for it existed, but he universalized it throughout the army and made it, and that was like the, one of the main principles of success. And he doesn't, and he does <clears throat> basically stick to the ideas made by other people, but they just hadn't been implemented yet. So basically, Napoleon, Chandler sees Napoleon as not so much an innovator, so much as uh, a um, practitioner of other people's ideas. And so, and the interesting thing about this is, so it's written in 1968, and I may have mentioned in my review of the Napoleon biography how that biography was based off uh, some new scholarship, because uh, previously only two thirds of the available letters of Napoleon were available. But they have that biography, which you can see in the show up over there, like this way. Uh, that actually was written right after they released the last third of his letters. So that one is a bit more recent. And this one, perhaps because of that, but also because I'm starting to see the ways in which Andrew Roberts, the author of biography, was pretty biased towards Napoleon. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that picks Napoleon in a balanced, but generally kind of negative light regarding his personality. Like... Uh, Chandler is like, he, he agrees Napoleon is a very, very talented general, albeit his military ability declined, which is one of the theses, I guess you could say, of this book. But as a person, he actually is borderline, if not outright evil at times. Like, and, that, and he picks it, he actually pins this on uh, his um, finding out that, that um, his um, wife, Josephine, was cheating on him while he was in Egypt. I think that's a bit much. But um, <clears throat> and because apparently he said in a letter, that all that was left for him must be really selfish. And so he talks about his stuff, like how he executes the captives in Jaffa, how he, um, I didn't, there's a bunch of instances that I found surprising. In uh, Spain, he once sent a uh, regiment of the Polish uh, Hussars basically to their deaths. And I didn't mention that at all. I looked, actually, I looked back in the Andrew Roberts biography to see if he had mentioned that. He, he mentioned the event in like a sentence or two, and it wasn't nearly, and it wasn't like, he didn't mention that part of it at all. So you get a portrait of Napoleon as a very talented human being, and not like a monster, like he has a human side, but as someone who's like fundamentally selfish and has a very uh, callous view towards human life. 
So that's this attitude towards Napoleon. And it definitely paints my own picture because I only read what was a comparatively, not totally so, but comparatively more pro-Napoleon biography in which painted him in a more sympathetic light. So this book is, I think, was important for me in getting a more balanced perspective, balanced perspective of Napoleon. And there's a few other instances as well. Apparently, like, there's some times where Napoleon uh, tends to scapegoat his subordinates for things that are really his own fault. Uh, the author is definitely very much, maybe a little bit obsessed, actually, with charting Napoleon's ego and how maybe his megalomania uh, clouded his judgment. Uh, now, the Ed Robert bog very much goes against those things. So I think this actually brings me to my main criticism of this book. I think some of its claims are actually old-fashioned, and they shine few. It's actually some very awkward moments. Like for example, uh, I'm not entirely sure how serious he was being, but at multiple points in the book, uh, Chandler actually points to Napoleon's Corsican and Italian ancestry as being an explanation for his behavior. Like the idea that he took vendettas, for example, which is something that people in Corsica are stereotyped as doing. In the Andrew Roberts biography, uh, Roberts explains he doesn't believe that's really true of Napoleon at all, because there are plenty of instances in which. He actually uh, did not pursue grudges that he could have and would have probably been justified in doing so. But in this book, in the Chandler book, uh, Chandler is very clear. Oh, yeah, Napoleon, he pursued vendettas. He, he was a Corsican. That's just what he did. And I believe he also said something like, oh, his Corsican cunning is why he's so Machiavellian. And his hot Italian blood is what made him so that he wanted, uh, he um, had so many affairs. These are very old-fashioned operas. It was written in 1968. I have no idea what to add to this sort of thing about the time. But it's just so weird to read. Like, it doesn't happen often, but it's a little bit... It just seems silly, is what it seems like. I'm not sure... I hope, hopefully, it's not hurtful to Italians. I, it maybe it would be, actually. But to me, it seems, like, silly. Like, the idea that he'd think that and think that seriously. But that might have been an attitude at the time. So, although my perspective on Napoleon, I think it was balanced out by reading this book with more negative take on his personality. There are some things about it I uh, don't fully agree with. And that's actually the main reason I keep it from being a five stars. Which you'll see what my full review is later. Or my final rating is. Now... Uh, descriptions of battles are excellent. Now, actually, one of my main motivations for reading this wasn't just to learn about Napoleon, and although that's I'm very interested in that time period lately, uh, but it's actually because when I read history books, I generally have this problem with battles. I can I can understand pretty much everything else, but battles are like there's certainly a cloudiness. I can't quite explain it. It's like I'm I'm reading it and like I can't imagine the things in my head. This book helped with that. I don't think I'm fully I'm not really fully good at reading battles, which is just most of what this book is like battles and campaigns. But I've definitely gotten better. I think I actually have a better idea for like the strategic situation than the tactical situation. That is, I have a better idea for like the events of the whole campaign and the war, uh, <clears throat> and the individual battles themselves. But I'm glad to have read this book because I think it improved my understanding a bit of that. Because when you have a book that's just about the battles, I think there's actually a bit more uh, craftsmanship that goes into it. I think he's Chandler's a good, a good writer in that regard. Uh, he'll he'll add some like a uh, little poetic twist to battles and. Uh, <clears throat> I think, and also, oh, there's these wonderful maps in this book, actually. Let's see if you can find some. One of the things I think this makes this book really high value, there's many maps, and probably one of the most impressive is actually a spread-out map of Napoleon's routes to Egypt. Let's see if I can get the full thing out. It's a wonderful map. Hopefully I don't damage it. Okay, uh, so... It's going to be awkward to hold at the camera... Okay, I'll just show this much of it, but you can see it's a very interesting... That's the only map that's kind in this book, but the maps in general are pretty nice. Also found it pretty elucidating to um, hear uh, Chandler's ideas about Napoleon's tactics in battle. So I think, uh, like, the way Chandler sees it is Napoleon had a certain method, which had many different forms, although he also wasn't super consistent in applying it. But <clears throat> Napoleon, when he was outnumbered, he did this thing called the embryonic battle, which meant that he would... Uh, based on a larger opponent who was maybe a little separated <clears throat> and have one part of his army no, split off into a larger part and attack one part and then the other one would just pin the other one while the other one finished off the other one and then attack them. The core system was really key to this because the core system meant that an army could last a, a decent amount of time without supplies and fighting a larger army which would buy them time for a relief army to come in. <clears throat> My other point of criticism, this is kind of minor but it's a little bit disturbing so <clears throat> this book came in, was in 1968, I believe. And uh, the, there's this guy who's mentioned in JFC Foley. You guys probably don't know who he is. He died in 1966, I believe. So he was this British uh, <clears throat> military officer, and he was known for being an expert on Napoleonic Wars. But what he was also known for, he was a Nazi. And, and he actually, particularly in the Battle of Waterloo, Chandler quotes him, and he doesn't mention that, which I don't, I don't totally blame him, but just... 
it's a little bit discomforting. I don't know what Chandler's view on him was. I mean, I'm sure he didn't like appreciate that part. Like, I mean, in the beginning introduction, when he talks about how he believes it's wrong to clear an appointment to Hitler, and he says how Hitler was, um, and he used to clear Hitler was a bad person, but just so weird for him to mention JFC Fuller, who was a Nazi, and he doesn't mention that when he quotes him. It's just, um, it might not have been public knowledge when he wrote that, though. I think he wrote, I think this book was published two years after JFC Fuller's death, but it's a little bit uncomfortable with seeing him there. And yeah. But uh, maybe maybe it's, it might make some people uncomfortable if you know who he was. Uh, but he, he, only, he doesn't say him as any, like his political beliefs are mentioned, just his knowledge on the Polonic Wars is mentioned, which is, I mean, arguably that's just, you know, an objective way of putting it. But it's, um, if you know, but I was surprised, I saw his face, I was like, wait a minute, his name in there? I was like, wait a minute, I've heard of this guy. And I looked at him, I'm like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, my final rating book for this book is four and a half out of five stars. I, I, there's some old fashioned claims in this book. I mean, you know about the Hoyans, uh, I think the author has a sort of a rigidness in applying a CCs. Like, he's really convinced Napoleon's that <clears throat> tactical ability gradually declined over time, and his megalomania messed him up. And he's kind of like, it feels sometimes he's trying to shoehorn his arguments into that a little bit. But it's also admirable how he sticks to them and makes the book, gives, makes the book a more coherent and focused in that regard. But I do kind of dislike him, especially since I'd read the Andrew Roth biography. But I like that this book is more balanced than Napoleon, to learn more about him and change my opinion on him. And uh, I think it just also increased my appreciation for reading about battles in history. It was also increased my appreciation of pulling out tactics. Because to be honest, I didn't really get a whole lot of that from the, from the Andrew Roberts book. Because even though it was in there, I'm just not good at reading battles. But I was very glad for having read that. <clears throat> so, I uh, very much enjoyed this book. And recommend it if you're okay very long. But it actually isn't quite as long as it looks. Because you notice the margins are actually very big for some reason. I think they're the maps. But it's a long book. But if you're like me and you like long history books, well, actually, I love long history books, then you should enjoy this. So, uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe to please the YouTube algorithm gods. And, uh, yeah, have a nice day.